So this video we're going to catch butterflies in Laos because I was studying the local fauna and I uh, had to have a first look and honestly it's a great place for butterflies. Green one. Yeah, yeah. Paris? You see the very metallic one? Yeah. Mm. yeah. With the turquoise. That's the main. Oh. Castor, you see? Yeah. Castor? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, this one, which we mix the Danais. Yeah. There's uh, some the female. Yeah. 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 Male. Yeah, generally male are the Robin. ones that puddle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go for the mineral. Yeah. But the no, female is not come. No, they, they don't. Go to female don't yeah. usually like this. Uh. Lay eggs on the little piece. Have the in Cambodia. And then we're all blooming. It Boom. smells like crazy. It's the flower of the cacao of the goat. It doesn't smell from like cacao. You know? It's like we call a doggy bear. Yeah, okay, if you can catch it. What's up everyone and thanks for watching. Today I'm studying butterflies and moths in Lang Prabang. Um, it's part of my job. And to my surprise, I found this amazingly beautiful butterfly here. I captured it with a net down the stream. And it's highly iridescent and green. Its colors are amazing. If you're wondering what the name of this species is, it's the Papilio Paris, a species that's quite common here in the vicinity. But uh, you won't find them anywhere, they are most common around streams and ponds uh, where you can find mills mud puddling. I'm gonna let this one go, goodbye. Uh, I didn't see it, it was very fast.
Wow. So iridescent. Yeah. It's super fresh. And the female has no blue at all. And no, and no orange. It's very hard to find the females. Just more, a yeah. little bit more white. Super scarce. One female in five years. One female in five <laughs> in years. Five years. So it could be good to breed, but the problem is to get female. Even this side is wrong. Hey, it's playing dead. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So I'm in Luang Prabang, Laos. And today I caught this uh, Histia flabellicornis, one of the many moths here that mimic the native butterflies. And uh, this one forms a mimicry complex with uh, the many uneatable uh, Papillioni day here. It will be interesting to see if this species is breedable or not. It seems to be common here, but still not easy to catch them. belongs to the family Zigaenidae and if you follow my YouTube channel for a longer time you've may maybe you've seen me breed other butterfly mimics like the Apicopaya from Japan, the Apicopaya hainesi um, the difference between the similarities between those are only superficial uh, this one belongs to the Zigaenidae family so it's a completely different family um, I guess they look similar in appearance because they form a mimicry complex with the same kind of butterflies. But yeah. Let's put this one in the cage. Hopefully it will breed. There it is. Very nice species, huh? Good chance like this. They always keep flying. Uh, what do you uh, what do you uh, say in it? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sure. <laughs> Why not? Good night. Uh, but just don't bring the cage. Like no, you have to collapse your cage if you go that way. Okay. Hey, look!
Hi everyone and thanks for watching. My name is Bart Koppens, a traveling entomologist from the Netherlands. Working with moths used to be my hobby, but thanks to my exposure on YouTube and social media, it became my job. Thank you for following my travels in Laos and Cambodia, which is part of the video series that you are watching now. This is the outro video, so skip ahead to the next episode if you like. I would just like to remind all of you to like and subscribe and consider joining my crowdfunding platform. Because as, as an independent entomologist, crowdfunding enables me to do independent work on insects and improve my YouTube channel. So if you are willing and able, please consider joining. And otherwise I would like to say thanks for watching and stay tuned for more insects and moths. Bye.